Okay, let's pray. Yeah. Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, Lord, that you've um, gathered us, Lord, for a purpose. We thank you for your plans. We thank you for your will that is always good, for your desires, Lord, that are good for us, Lord. And so we, we just want to invite you, Lord, invite you to have your way in our lives, Father God. Invite you to, Lord, equip us, Lord, empower us, Lord. And we want to actively seek you, Father God, intentionally, Lord, put you first in our lives, Father God. And um, I just pray that even as we follow you, Lord, intentionally, Lord, we thank you that your word says that, Lord, when we follow you, Master, that we will be, you will make us, Lord, as fishers of men. And so there is value in following you, Lord, 24-7. And uh, there is transformation and change that is happening in us, Father God, simply because we are following you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for the change. We thank you for the transformation that you're bringing into our lives, Father God. We thank you. Because we know that it is for our good, Lord, to, to be more Christ-like, to reflect, oh God, who you are in and through our lives, Master. We thank you. We come at this class into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um, we are looking at uh, chapter 5, right? The ministry of the word and the importance of the word. Um, so we said uh, we were looking at different aspects of, uh, we are looking at the preacher, Right, last class, how the 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 person is very important. The content, even before we look at the content of uh, what that person is going to be speaking, uh, well, the the person himself or herself is of uh, immense value because, well, uh, he or she represents God as an ambassador of Christ, uh, or he or she is a vessel who. Um, who brings across the message, and the message is not devoid of the speaker, you know, not disconnected from the speaker. So that's the thing, you know, like how we see the media itself uh, brings a message. The message and the messenger are one, right? Um, so we look at um, uh, the word of God, which is the content. Okay, so the content of what we are sharing. Um, there is the the word of God is what we are sharing. So when you might you might ask the question, you know. If it's not the word, then then what is it? You know, what is it that we can? Show? What is it that a preacher should speak, or what is it that a preacher should, um, you know, communicate? Like if it's not the word of God, uh, like through the years we've seen that, um, you know, uh, in the in the church we see that yes, there are there have been several instances where the word of God is not given importance. Right? There's a word of God that is not given importance, and it's not just a problem. In today's church, it was something that was there right from the, the right from scriptural times, right from the days of Paul the Apostle, and uh, so he felt the need to instruct Timothy, who was leading a church in Ephesus, so to instruct him about the the Word of God, about coming back to the Word of God, about rightly dividing the Word of God, right, and to give themselves. Give, give himself over to the word of God. We see in First Timothy and Second Timothy, where he he talks about all this, and he says, you know, this, um, for example, First Timothy chapter one and verse four, he says, um, you know, verse verse three, he says, this is why I, when I went to Macedonia, I put you or appointed you to remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Okay, so which means that there were people who are teaching things that were not from the word of God or not in line with the word of God. So he he felt it necessary to address this. Right? This was happening in Ephesus. So he says, you know, I urged you, I want you to remain in Ephesus that you may teach some that they teach, that they charge some, meaning you command them, or strongly tell them that they teach no other doctrine. Okay, verse four nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith okay so another thing that he's saying you know don't listen to fables what are fables fables are stories right fables are stories which don't which you know which, which could, could be good stories but they're not real right so he's saying no don't just listen to these fables and endless genealogies maybe about people's lineage and you know from which family they are born and and all that so this is just 
it will just give rise to disputes right unnecessary disputes so this is something to be avoided it does not produce godly edification okay? so he says now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart from a good conscience and from sincere faith from which some having strayed have turned aside to idle talk okay idle talk which means it's unnecessary talk useless talk that is happening in the in the name of preaching okay so he's saying some have strayed aside to idle talk desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm okay so so this is the context he's saying okay there are there are these people who have strayed away and they are teaching some things which are not in line with the word of god okay so you please tell them they need to teach the right doctrine okay then he talks about some of these idle talk which is happening and uh, which is which is not accomplishing the plan and purpose of god okay because he's saying the purpose of the commandment the purpose of the, uh, the commandment is love from a pure heart from a from a good conscience and from sincere faith now what is happening some of them people have strayed away from it indulging in idle talk their desire is to be teachers they want to teach right they want to be uh, teaching law but they their the, the understanding is not there and they also nor do they affirm uh, what nor do they understand what they say they uh, the things that they say and things that they affirm and so on so over and over again right paul instructs this is the first thing you know this is the first thing he addresses when he writes to timothy then he also you know says in uh, different places right uh, about prophecies um, by them you conduct the good warfare and about prayer and so on and then again in chapter 4 first timothy again he comes back to it right he says um he, he says that uh, you know let, let no one despise your youth but you be an example in these things right uh, in the word also that's one thing is mentioned in verse 12 if you look at verse 6 he says that nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine which you have carefully followed okay so the importance of the word of god in the ministry when it comes to preaching when it comes to you know uh, instructing others right so if you look at it god's word carries the power of god okay if you look at different expressions of or different descriptions of the word god's word we see that god's word is referred to as a seed right which parable the parable of the sower of the seed where you know it talks about the seed it's sown and it uh, it grows and uh, it bears fruit and so on and so many things happen to choke the the seed of god the, from being you know from thriving and flourishing and and becoming all that it's supposed to because the seed carries potential and if you look at it the seed carries potential and so the word of god is like into a, a sword what else do we see or in in wherever about the word of god it's, it's compared to certain things it's described as you know something the word of god the written word the spoken word what are some other you know things that we see uh written it uh, carries a uh, creative power it, it carries create. creative power right in the genesis we read about that right yes. that we see that okay this is what god said and god said and it was so so it talks about the the creative power of god okay what other scriptures hmm so to so which verse uh, which scripture you know talks about that uh, so this is in genesis where god spoke uh he said and it was so so any other scripture which talks about that directly describes the word of god as this is what he does like for example if you look at uh, you know if you look at jeremiah chapter 23 right uh, can we turn to jeremiah 23 okay jeremiah 23 verse 29 okay jeremiah 23 verse 29 
if you just turn in your Bible. Um, so it says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So the Lord himself is saying, okay, th this is how my word is. It's like a hammer. It's like a fire. Okay, so what do we learn from this? What do we understand from word, uh, from God's word? Yeah, so, mm, so, so, yeah, right, right. Yeah, so, so when he says, okay, two, two pictures he uses, my word is like um, a fire and my word is like the hammer, right? So we know fire burns, okay, fire immediately burns up, burns up something um, and then it changes that very thing. That it's you know it's uh, it's when it's actually feeding on right uh, what we give as fuel it just changes it yeah so it's like the fire that burns it's immediate like right? it changes it brings in change that could be immediate burns up burns away burns up things that are unnecessary right so it burns word of God is like a hammer it says what does a hammer do it is heavy it's it's hard it even brings it it says that it that breaks the rock in pieces right actually if you go to the airport on the way to the airport um, elanka um, on the left i think it's after that uh, that army thing you will see a huge uh, mountain that is being ex excavated you know there's a lot of uh, not excavation sorry they they're mining it um, so it's a quarry like you see and uh, i remember i'm i'm seeing it right from the time i came to bangalore right from those days when the road was not proper, you know, I've gone back, back and forth many times on that road, and I've seen that. So that thing was huge initially, right? But quarry, it's a, it's you know, they they detonate things, they use explosions, they these lorries go fill it up, and, and over a period of time, that huge thing has become actually half its size now, right? If you look at it, right? So if you look at the word of God, God is saying, my word is like a hammer. Right? You could think, you could say, oh, this mountain is so huge. It's so you know overwhelming, intimidating. They're saying it's like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Right? Sometimes one hit and that rock is shattered. Sometimes it's many hits, but you can be sure that it will be reduced to a rubble. So powerful is the word of God. So you know, when it comes to things, situations, when it comes to challenges, when it comes to, you know, Things that we need breakthrough in, breakthrough from, like the word of God is like the hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. What else do we see? It's like it's yeah, it's likened to a sword, right? And uh, that word used there is rema. God's rema is like a sword, um, and we see that in Ephesians six, right? Ephesians chapter six as the armor. Hebrews four twelve, oh, yeah. Hebrews four twelve. It talks about how sharp it is. Like living, powerful, and uh, like a two-edged sword that uh, right that pierces even to the soul and spirit and uh, thoughts and intents of the heart. Right. Ephesians six it talks about how it is used in warfare. Right. It's one of the weapons that is used in warfare, spiritual warfare. Right. So it, we see that. Yeah. What else? It tastes like, uh, um, like. Can we can we just check which verse it is? Like, does it talk talk about the Lord Himself, or does it talk about um, word like honey in the rock is the Lord Himself, right? Um, hmm. Kind words are like honey. Okay, sweet to the soul and health to the body. Yeah, not really referring to God's word. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and I was just thinking of that verse which says, uh, "For he is, he tastes like honey in the rock," referring to the Lord Himself uh, as a like a experience which is pleasant and yeah. The Word of God is lamp unto our feet. Yes. Um, so it brings light and revelation, and we see that in Psalm 119, right? 103. Okay. Oh, about the sweetness. Okay. 
which um, verse is that um, okay some 119103 okay 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 so, so. Mm -hmm. okay how sweet are these words to my taste and sweeter than honey um yeah to my mouth it's a very direct reference about the word of god about the pleasantness of the word of god about how refreshing it is and so on Psalm 105 your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path so it talks about um revelation it also talks about how the word of god reveals where we should put our feet right? where we should walk you know if you look at uh, that verse it says a lamp to my feet and a light to my path okay so when it says lamp to my feet it's like a it's like a torchlight or like a lamp it lights up the immediate environment right maybe a few feet right a lamp will not light up maybe you know one kilometer away right or half a kilometer away like if you use a lamp here it's here it's you it, it won't actually shine until the gate so it talks about the immediate steps that we need to take right immediate decisions immediate choices the word of god is a lamp to our feet okay where should we go next where should which direction Okay, what should I avoid immediately? The word of God is like that. What what else do we see? The word of God is a lamp, as a light to my path. Okay, so the path is something further on, right? It's it's definitely a longer distance. It's not just the feet where you put your feet on, but it's you know what lies ahead. So it says that the word of God is like a lamp. So it brightens up, it shows me, gives me direction, gives me direction for immediate decisions and immediate choices. Gives me direction for what is far ahead, also. Okay, what else do we see? Sorry, Where, which uh, right, like by bread alone, right? So, uh, words of the Lord Jesus, right? So we see that in um, is it in the Mark or Mark four or? No, Matthew, right? Okay. So Matthew four, the Lord uh, Matthew four four, and the Lord is referring to, uh, um, yeah, Deuteronomy, I think. Yeah. So He's saying, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God." So, again, the word of God is parallel to food. Natural food sustains a man, right? But uh, this is spiritual food that sustains a man. So he's saying man cannot live by just by bread alone. But the word of God is like that. How a natural being is a, uh, a natural man physically uh, needs strength, needs nourishment. So also the word of God providing nourishment, providing strength. Right? Okay. Mm. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. So Isaiah fifty-five and uh, eleven. Right. Okay. Mm. So God releases the word, doesn't return to him empty or without fulfilling it. It accomplishes what it pleases, and it says it, it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So the God is God is you know, releasing uh, His word, and it's prospering, and and you know. Fulfilling the purpose for whatever the purpose for which he you know releases the word right yeah Gertrude says um, in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God so yeah John one one it's talking about the eternal word or the living word referring to Jesus himself like the person the the word being the person so when you say the word of God this is also another thing that it's referring directly referring to the Lord Jesus right. And uh, we are born again by the incorruptible word of God, right? And where do we see that? I think it's in First Peter or Second Peter. Okay. Um, is it uh, Second Peter? First Peter is in. Uh -huh. 
first peter which okay yeah chapter 1 verse 23 having been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of god which lives and abides forever okay so a person being born again like so there's something happening in the spirit regeneration of the spirit through the word of god which is again you know referred to as a seed right so we see all these wonderful references about what the word of god is and who the word of god is again referring to jesus and what the word of god can accomplish the different aspects of it and ephesians talks about uh, the washing of the water by the word of god so it's kind of a, you know a, a, a cleansing that happens even as we engage with the word of god word of god we know produces faith faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god so all that happens so the importance of preaching or ministering the word of god right and not um and not making a substitute of it right maybe we have heard it so many times maybe we've read it so many times um but that doesn't diminish the importance that doesn't diminish the eternal value that the word of god or the you know long lasting permanent changes that the word of god can bring okay so we see all this and it's like you know how can i not preach the word of god okay how can i not share when when i say word of god we're not talking about just physical bible alone but what the spirit of god inspires or reveals uh, about the the logos you know what rema we receive so how can we not share that yeah okay yeah yeah yes the word which was released through authority yeah yeah correct so yeah so we see that um, yeah god's the importance of god's word you know so like yeah brings healing brings wholeness and uh, you know that's why he says i sent my word and healed your disease exodus right so so we see that uh, that is why the in our gathering in our right when any every time the church gathers there is that engagement with the word of god right there is yes there is teaching there is instruction uh, everything that comes but it's all based on the word of god and from the word of god right so you know if if you if you look at that it is because of this it's not because it's tradition to read a few verses and talk about it and and so on because we we, we see that this is what the word of god can accomplish and this is what the word of god can bring into a person's life right so uh, so it's something that is so precious something that is so valuable and uh, and we need to understand the importance of it right so if you look at um, some of the things that god does god works by his word right because the bible says that he actually confirms the communication of his word with his power right if you look at uh, hebrews um so it's not the mantra that we chant <laughs> right it's not a okay i i use it i see it you know it's like now dracula will flee from it you know it's, like, it's not like that right so he, hebrews chapter 2 it says uh Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 2 for if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and every disobedience received a just reward how shall we expect i'm sorry how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by the lord is okay, spoken by the lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him then verse 4 god also bearing witness both with signs and wonders with various miracles and gifts of the holy spirit according to his own own will okay so signs wonders gifts of the holy spirit he's bearing witness right he's confirming yes this is true what that person spoke about me and about my word is true so he's bearing witness how with his power with his presence with his power okay so so god works uh by his 
word according to the word of god right so god's word like we saw you know isaiah 55 it carries his power because he it's something that he releases he accomplishes things when he releases the word right um, let's look at one, one one more scripture 1 thessalonians chapter 2 okay. and um, this verse verse 13 okay for this reason we also thank god without ceasing because when you received the word of god which you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of god which also effectively works in you who believe okay effectively works in you now what did these people do they received people like paul and the others they shared the word of god and so the people who heard it they received it welcomed it paul says um, because they knew that they, he says you welcomed it as if it was not the word of God, because it's in truth, it's the word of, it's not a word of men, but it's the word of God. And he also says something, verse 13, the last part of it, he says, which effectively works, okay, effectively works. And that word talks about creative power, that word talks about, you know, effectively, meaning, you know, it's a work, or it could be creative, it could be supernatural work, okay, which effectively works in you who believe. Right, so who believe God, and it effectively works in that person. Okay, those who believe the word of God. Right, so there's this whole aspect of faith, and which produces of faith, which causes the word of God to effectively, uh, you know, uh, to to work effectively in a, in a person's life. Right. So we, when we see that, um, when we look at the word of God, we also see that God chooses human vessels to be communicators of the word of god right see god works sovereignly right and again works by his word but he does things sovereignly like how he met with saul when he was on the word road to damascus he meets he speaks uh, he has this encounter and that's it there was no human person involved there god does things sovereignly but also god we know that god works right through human agents, like we saw, you know, even the you know the local church, you saw sowing, reaping, watering. He works through us as human beings, right, to communicate the word of God. Okay, so we see that um, in Paul's case again, yes, Paul had an encounter. Now he could not see. He's in that house. God sends Ananias to be the communicator, to be the com to communicate what his intents were for Paul, right? So he sends him. He also sends him to communicate, to rep, to be a representative of his power, now, if you notice that, right? So it's not just as a spokesperson to say, okay, this is what God says, so I'm telling you, but also to tell that person, hey, this is what God does, so you receive what God does. So Ananias does that, right? So he's communicating, and he's transmitting God's word and also God's power. Right? So Paul re receives his sight. Saul receives his sight. And at the same time, as is the Bible says that he's baptized the Holy Spirit. He also, you know, um, receives the word. And, and Ananias sends, and God sends Ananias to do that. Right. Uh, um, and one thing that we see that the word of God does is uh, one other thing that we see is that it brings maturity to a believer right so if if you want somebody to mature in christ a person to 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 grow up in christ the the thing that they need is of course you know so spend time with the lord and spend time in his presence but the most important thing that they need is for them to receive the word to believe in the word and to live by the word right so that brings maturity Without the word, well, a person can, uh, well, he he uh, he or she, right, might have a limited understanding, but that understanding does not grow. Right, they might have a good heart, they might be sincere, right, but there's not maturity in 
all areas of their life because the word of god covers all areas right finances family and character and parenting and you know everything all aspects the word of god covers so if one does not receive that or is not aware of that then in that area there's not maturity right so the word of god brings a believer it brings maturity in the life of a believer right yeah chen right. in your pastoral ministry when you see people come to you for prayers and thing uh, uh, so don't you think we as christians sometimes uh, either undermine or you know don't um, effectively use the word of god in our situations in our uh, situations on any situations. any challenges that we face as christians we know we have the word we know the word but um, we don't like you know uh, thing mm. so when people how is how has that been on your experience so let's say people come for prayer yes, and then uh, for various reasons of course you know there is value in praying there's value in um, ministering in prayer that is also you know part of uh, what we need to do as a body of christ you know not just as pastor to this thing um, because bible says pray for one another right so we do pray um, but also the thing is to uh direct them to the word of god and then also say hey you have this already right uh, like many instances like people come without an understanding of their identity right or uh, uh, a lack of understanding of the identity without understanding of the authority that they have uh without an understanding of uh, literally god standards right and because of that there's so much of problems Right. they open their doors and you know because of ignorance because of negligence so uh, i remember talking to uh, this person uh, a good believer sincere believer but she she did not have a you know like a, a realization or revelation of the kind of authority that god had given you know the kind of revelation authority that they god had given so always in fear fear and in, uh, that the enemy would do something fear and being intimidated by intimidated by the enemy right so on certain days on certain nights like certain things would happen because that fear is there that expectation is there okay today on you know this full moon and the thing something's going to happen and so and the enemy would take advantage of that so yeah so you're right yeah once person a person gets a revelation of the authority which is there in the word of god and the person immediately matures you know they use them at your maturity use their you know authority and then they yeah so that's the thing so along with so the thing is this along with prayer it's good to also share hey you know this you have this and this you can do on your own you need to stand on your own um, yeah so that's it right. okay so let's look at a few verses matthew 4:4 we've already seen it says a man should not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god okay and first peter 2 2 also we saw um uh, about uh, the word being the um incorruptible seed right so we saw that um so uh, first peter 2 2 uh, to desire milk of the word right uh, so it talks about how first peter 2 verse 2 it says um, laying aside all malice deceit hypocrisy envy and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby if indeed you have tasted that the lord is gracious so um again the connection between growth spiritual growth and the word of god right how like the newborn babies they desire the pure milk of the word i mean the pure milk and that is what is required of them for them to grow right so therefore says you just the same way you desire what do you desire desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby right and several other verses which talks about you know romans 10 talks about how faith comes and and faith comes by the word of god right so romans 10 and verse um, 17 is it yeah faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god right so word of god is something that produces faith right so um just by reading the word studying the word of god meditating on the word of god it produces something supernatural right so, so produces something spiritual right now when we look at the word we see that these are words mere words right if you look at the pages of your bible we see these are words information 
uh, information about something, about someone, about some incident, incident, right? If you go through, that's what it is, right? It is information. Stories are there, parables are there, teaching incidents are there. So it's information. But this becomes powerful. This information is enough to produce something spiritual. Right? This natural information, or it seems to be, you know, a physical natural information that produces something spiritual in us, and that's called faith, right? And because it is not just human natural information because it is god breathed god inspired right so we see all this word of god again is a antidote for sin protection against sin the psalmist says the word i have hidden in my heart that i might not sin against you and so on so so this is this is something that we see over and over and over again and therefore, we need to understand that when I, when we are called to preach the word of God, the uh, the, the content, the, the word of God has to have the centrality in it, right? The importance of it. So we looked at all these verses and all these descriptions of the word of God simply to understand that yes, uh, if I need to minister the word, this is what I need to do. I need to give value the importance i need to share the uh, word of god so it's not yes you know certain times we need to tell you know based on how people are where people are maybe we can share it in the form of a story we can share it, share it in the form of you know inspirational stories just to encourage the people right we could do that but ultimately change comes right change comes transformation comes because of the word of god being rooted in their hearts, right? So, so that's the importance of it. When we look at the parable of the sower, so the parable of the sower very, very clearly describes the what the word of God does, okay, and the extent to which Satan goes to steal the word of God. Okay, so Mark chapter four, right? We see about the word of God. Uh, let me just um, I think we have a few minutes. Let me share something else. Um, yeah. Okay, so, um, sorry. Yeah, about the, the Word of God and uh, Mark chapter four. So we see that, okay, the word of God, God's word is like a seed. Okay, so it has potential. Uh, if you look at every seed that has in it, it carries some information about what it's supposed to grow into. Right? Given the uh, ideal situation, ideal, um, you know, the environment, it has the potential to grow into something, you know, something much bigger than what it that what it is right it, it is sown in the ground and it is watered and protected it grows so god's word is like the seed okay? and so the bible says that our heart is the ground in which the word of god is sown word of god must be sown so when we are preaching we are actually doing the work of sowing right it is sown in people's hearts now it depends on the response of the people also right now people need to hear it be open to it receive it by faith right and then the word begins to work right mark chapter 4 again we see that okay it must be protected and nurtured okay if you look at uh, the, let's let's turn to mark chapter 4 um okay so first of all we see that um, there is persecution that arises because of the word okay and because the the word does, does not does not have depth in it it immediately, what happens to the word? It burns up, right? So it says that um, uh, verse fifteen, I think. These are the words by the first of all the words by the wayside, where the word is sown. Where they hear, Satan comes immediately, takes away the word that was sown in their heart because they did not understand it, right? So it just uh, Mark chapter four and verse uh, fourteen, fifteen onwards, right? Where the Lord is explaining the parable of the sower, then. 
there is there are some seeds on stony ground they hear the word immediately receive with gladness but they have no root and endure only for a time when tribulation comes because or persecution because of the word it is immediately it uh, it they stumble and therefore they lose it right lose the word it's not held fast to right so we see that also happening so again the human responsibility clearly comes out right something happens against the word right something happens to take the word out so that is a response even to the you know the preaching uh, to whatever instructions you know so this is a response a there is a spiritual attack in the form of the enemy and there is also a human you know negligence or human response because of which the word does not bear fruit right so persecution and so if you're not holding fast then that happens then it talks about the lust of the flesh the uh, the last cares of the world the deceitfulness of riches right so these things also choke the word of god right again a human responsibility human response right so if they, if i'm not careful it chokes the word of god so we might say hey word of god is supernatural it has to work god has spoken no not so it has it is dependent on man's responsibility because it involves the will of man right okay so when we receive when we believe then when we act on the word of god then we receive then we see the uh, effectiveness of it okay um just wanted to uh, share one one more thing yeah for us to understand that um, you know isaiah 55 when the, when the lord says uh, in verse 10 you know this is this is how it is you know he talks about rain he talks about snow he talks about what it does to the earth and it actually makes he says it make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater verse 11 says so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth okay so what is he saying he's saying just like how you see the water how the rain how it actually waters the ground and causes the seed that is sown there to produce so will be my word that will be the work of the word that goes it is designed to produce something right it is designed to do something so it's designed to produce it will accomplish what god purposes uh, his his purpose is plan right and uh, it will also reveal right accomplish that god purpose pleases and what is his purpose and what god wants to accomplish when he speaks forth that also happens and also it reveals god's purpose and it reveals god's pleasure okay so um yeah you can also for um, uh additional reading you can actually go through the publication um the word of god god's word the miracle seed right um you can actually download it from the website god's word the miracle seed for e learning students i'll uh, upload it it will be there in the textbook section you can actually download it from there uh, it's a very um interesting it's a very important um you know uh, reading that we can actually go through because it talks about the word of god it talks about the human responsibility and response to the word of god very important right because 1 thessalonians 2 and verse 13 says effectively works in you who believe right so very very important okay so we'll stop here and then we'll uh, continue next class right okay fine okay thank you god bless see you